All right, let's talk about anchor brushes. But before I do that, I'm gonna show you two techniques. One is a gizmo curve technique and the other one is an IMM curve technique. And I'm gonna show you the pros and cons of both of those and how anchor brushes can overcome some of those cons. So the first one we're gonna do is we're gonna hit W on our keyboard. That's gonna go into gizmo mode. And I have a cylinder in my scene as, an, as a separate sub. So we're gonna make this into a tentacle. I'm gonna hold down Alt and tap at the end of the cylinder just to kind of put the line or the axis of this gizmo right down the middle of this object here. You can see it's shooting straight down the object. Now with the gizmo activated, again, we can hit W on our keyboard to do that. Hit this gear icon. And I'm going to change this to bend curve. What that's going to do is take the bounding box of this object, in this case a cylinder, and it's going to go find an axis essentially. And this axis is controlled here. So you can choose this axis. It's a X, Y, and Z axis. And it generally picks the right one. It goes down the length of the object. This is just what I want. And then this curve right here, this cone, uh, can change the curve resolution. So if you just want a little bit of resolution, here's three points. You can grab all of these points right here and it will manipulate uh, this mesh as a deformer. So we can go ahead and put in a little bit of a tentacle wave. And if I'm like, I need more resolution to give a little more bend in here, just go to the resolution slider, click that or drag that up once. And now you have more resolution points to go through here and start moving your tentacle around. Now, you may have noticed every time I touch one of these dots, we have three more cones coming out of it. If you hover over this one, you're gonna see this is twist. So every single one of these points, I can go through and select it and twist down the object. Uh, the other one here is scale. So we can scale at every point. So you can scale this one up, maybe scale this one up just a tiny bit, and then maybe scale this one down just a little bit. And then finally, we'll scale this point down even more to get a nice taper to our curve. And the very last one is squeeze. That will basically squeeze on one axis. So we can scale or inflate down the curve. We can choose any one of these points and manipulate the curve and we can make ourselves a nice tentacle that goes from thick to thin using again, gizmo deformer bend curve. Now, another option you might be thinking about, well, if we're gonna make tentacles, let's use an IMM curve brush. Okay, that sounds like a good idea. So I'm gonna hit B on my keyboard to bring up my brush menu. C to narrow it down to curve brushes. And then we're gonna go over here to curve tube, where you can hit nine on your keyboard. And all we need to do is click on our object and drag off, and we can make a tentacle curve. Now I already have this one set up, so it goes tapers thin to thick. Yours may not do that by default. All you have to do is when you drag this out and it looks like this, go over here to your stroke menu. I'm gonna take the stroke menu and dock it over here by dragging that dot over. And we're gonna turn on the size option and we're gonna say, I want this curve to go thick. And we're gonna grab this other point on this side and we're gonna to go to thin. We're gonna to tap to update our curve. And now we have a curve that goes thick to thin. And I can still manipulate this curve. I can drag this point here, make sure you're underneath stroke here, you go into the curve options and you say curve mode on, bend start, bend end. And now you can go through here and start manipulating this curve on the fly, getting some nice movement going through the tentacle. So we know how to go thick to thin, which is nice. Of course, we don't have the kind of functionality the deformer did where we could thicken it up in the middle. And this one, we'd have to go in here and say, okay, let's thicken it up in the middle and go here and then tap. And that'll kind of give us, but it's not really hands-on. You have to go over here and manipulate a curve. And if you want to get rid of this dot, just grab it and drag it off and then tap to update your curve. So you can do that functionality. It's just, you're not really manipulating hands-on. You're kind of doing it over here on a graph. Uh, and as far as twisting, you can actually do that in here. If you start moving, so if, if you're new to IMM brushes, you can move your cursor away to where it turns red. And we can say, for example, change our draw size up here or tap S on our keyboard, change our draw size and then tap again. That'll update the overall size. And then if we move our cursor over the line, that turns blue. And this will allow you to manipulate the underlying curve. Now, if you're manipulating the curve and you hold down control, it'll actually twist the geometry underneath the influence of that cursor. So again, you do have a little bit of twist control. You have a little bit of curve control. You have thickness control or scale or inflation control over here. So a lot of really cool functionality with IMM curves. So that's all fine and good. And in fact, let's go ahead and go to our subtool menu. I'm gonna say split mask points. And now we have two tentacles, one that was made with a deformer curve and I'm gonna alt tap to select these subtools in here. And then this one here was made from an IMM brush. Now let's say I go back to our original curve here and I hit W on my keyboard. And now I wanna keep using bend curve on this because I wanna add, maybe maybe I want this to curl really tw really tightly uh, right here at the end. Well, unfortunately, if I try and find the axis, my object doesn't really have much of an axis anymore. 
So if I go back into my deformer and I say, okay, give me a bend curve. Well, it's just finding the, bind, the bounding box of this object. And then I can go through here and I can kind of manipulate it, but it's a little hard to determine exactly how it's gonna behave. And really what you're looking for is just the ability to kind of bend this curve. So bend curve in this case is not going to work. One thing you can do is hit W on your keyboard and it'll put us back into gizmo mode. Uh, you can hold down control and drag along your object and that'll kind of mask as you go. And then you can hold down alt and set your pivot here and then you can kind of rotate this in. And then you can even hold down control, go in here to mask lasso. And then you can mask this out and then move your uh, gizmo pivot by holding down alt and then curling this in and then masking. And then you can even control tap to blur your mask and then alt to move the gizmo and then mask some more. So you can continue doing that or going in here with your move brush, however you want to kind of finagle this geometry to do what you want. So that's one of the downsides to the curve deformer or an IMM brush. IMM brush, you don't have the curve access anymore, it's gone. And then this one, you have to go through and do a lot of masking. So let's go ahead and undo all that. So now that I've talked about those types of functionality, let's talk about those anchor brushes. So I'm gonna hit B on my keyboard to go into my brush menu. A to narrow it down with all the A. Brushes to start with A. There's the only one, you can hit N or just tap it on your keyboard here. And that little six icon indicates there's six different types of brushes in here for you to choose from. You can either come up here and you can kind of scroll through here and select it, or you can use your arrow keys, just tap left and right on your keyboard to select, or you can hit M on your keyboard That'll bring up a little selection menu here and you can just choose which one you want to use. So we've chosen rotate. And the first thing you're going to do when you choose a new brush is you're going to try to use it, right? So you're going to tap on your mesh and that's going to leave a dot. And you're going to tap again on your mesh. That's going to leave another dot. If you tap again, it's going to get rid of that first dot and replace it with this dot. So essentially what this brush does is just drop two dots on your mesh. Not super useful until you uh, start manipulating these dots. And how you do that is you hover over a dot and it turns orange. And once it's done that, you can click and drag on it and it will manipulate your mesh based on where those anchors are on your mesh. So for example, if I tap at the very beginning of my mesh and the very end of my mesh, we've essentially placed two anchors here and we have rotate selected. So if I grab this anchor and drag it around, it's going to rotate my mesh within the area of influence between these two anchors using this as an anchor point and allowing me to rotate this point around the other. And the opposite is also true. I can grab this anchor point and rotate it around the other. And that same system still holds true for all of these. So if I go up here to move, exact same thing. I can take this one and move it, or I can take this one and move it using that as an anchor. Move, rotate, this one has a little bit of move and rotate functionality built in. Scale, it'll scale up. From that anchor point down there, it's anchored, and then it's gonna scale from this one I'm manipulating, or I can anchor it to this one, grab this one and pull, and it will scale from that anchor point to the bottom here. Same thing with inflate. We can inflate through here, and we can inflate down here. And then finally, twist. Uh, the twist axis that it's on is if you line up these two anchor points here, essentially that straight line is the axis that uh, we're twisting around here. Now, old school ZBrush users might recognize functionality similar to this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go, uh, I have a hotkey for standard brush, it's just Alt S. You can just go hit B on your keyboard and then go S and U to go back to where your standard brush. And let's hit W on our keyboard again. Remember, that's gonna bring up your gizmo. However, if you come up here, you're gonna see uh, there's a gizmo 3D and a Y as a hotkey. If you touch this button or tap Y on your keyboard, that switches it to this transpose line. And very much like the anchor brushes, you can set, just by clicking and dragging, you're gonna set an anchor at that initial point, and then you're gonna drag down here, and that's going to set another anchor point. Uh, and I can switch between move, scale, and rotate by going W, E, R on my keyboard. So with W selected, and again, we've, if you grab these outer orange rings, you can, you can move these anchor points here on your transpose line. So if I hit W, I can use that top anchor here, and I can move around that anchor, I can hit E to go into uh, scale, and I can scale from that anchor point here, I can scale from that bottom anchor point here, and of course I can then go into rotate, and I can rotate around that anchor point, or the opposite, rotate around this anchor point. So again, similar functionality, however, if I go again B, A, N, we have not just move, scale, and rotate, but we have inflate, which you can't do with transpose, and twist, which you can't, well, you can't really twist with transpose. You can kind of rotate, but it won't twist. So you have a little bit of extra functionality with these anchors and 
you can very quickly, what I guess you can call walk with these anchors to kind of manipulate your mesh. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap here at the beginning and then tap here close to it. And between those two points, let's go ahead and switch to rotate. Between these two points here, I can rotate here and then I can tap here a little bit later and rotate here, tap here, and just keep rotating. Now you're gonna see it starts, it starts affecting the beginning of this mesh. You can just undo that, hold down control, and mask lasso and this works with masking so again as i continue to walk through here we can continue to kind of rotate around and it's using this anchor point and allowing me to continue rotating from the previous anchor point if you see it starting to to grab any mesh down here just simply grab a little bit of a mask and mask it out another thing you can do too to mask as you go you can hit w on your keyboard and you can hold down control and mask uh, along your object. You can even do this with the gizmo. So if you hit Y on your keyboard, again, you can just hold down control and mask down the surface of your object just with that functionality. And then with that, you can use your anchor points to go ahead and set them and then start rotating them around. Again, just kind of walking down your mesh and rotating as you go. Again, if it does something like this, you can just go and control and drag and isolate that back out. And now you have total control down your mesh to not just rotate like we've been doing, but if you want to, you can switch over to scale and you can scale up keeping this masked and then scaling from that uh, point or scaling down or you can scale up or again, inflating along the surface normals is also super useful. And you can do that at any point. So if you want to anchor here and scale at that point, you can. And if you want to mask this off, you can even control tap this to blur that mask off. Now it will scale from here. And again, it's going to anchor here. So it'll inflate along that curve or along your mesh here between those two points. And again, that's uh, inflate, that's twist, that's scale, that's all sorts of cool stuff that you can do with these anchor points and this brush. Now we do need to know basic anchor point functionality and you already know most of it, you just basically tap on your object. However, sometimes you may wanna reposition this object into the middle uh, of your mesh. So for instance, let's go to this body here. I'm gonna alt tap the body and we'll go ahead and turn the eyeballs off here. I'm gonna turn off X symmetry while we're working on this body. And so if I tap on the belly here and then on the chin, I've got two anchor points. However, if I start rotating this, for example, go in here to rotate and I start rotating around this point, it'll rotate okay. But when I go forward to back, for instance, you're gonna see because the anchor points in the front, instead of bending in the middle like I would expect it to, it's bending along the front because that's where the point is. So to move points, what you need to do is when you hover over, it's gonna turn orange and that means it's manipulatable. And when you just have one dot on your object, you can just move your object if you want. There's no other object to anchor to or away from. However, when you have two dots, that's when you can go in here. And again, we can kind of rotate. However, I want this to go in the middle of my body. So what I need to do is hover over it so that I'm gonna manipulate it, it turns orange, and then start actually touch down on your tablet. And then when you've touched down or you've pressed down a little bit, hold down control and that'll allow you to move. If you do it too fast, if you hold down control and then start moving this, it's just gonna mask. So we don't wanna mask, we wanna hover over this, start, like grab it and then hold down control and that'll allow you to reposition that point. So now what we can do is if we, um, Again, choose rotate in here. I can now rotate along this axis in the middle of the body, or like we were talking about earlier, we can twist. So I can kind of twist here to the right, to the left. I can scale, again, using that as an anchor point. Inflate, move, rotate, no problem. You can do any of that stuff. And this is a subdivision mesh. We have subdivision one, two, three. So anchor brushes work with subdivision meshes. They work with low poly meshes. In fact, we alt tap on this one here. We go in here to geometry, dynamesh. Just go ahead and hit dynamesh. I'm gonna go ahead and smooth this out a little bit. So we now have a dynamesh mesh. Works no problem. Click here, click here. Move, scale, and rotate. Works just fine with dynameshes. It works with symmetry. So if I alt tap this tentacle here and we go to our subtool stack and we say delete. And then with this tentacle selected, I go to geometry, modify topology. And we do a mirror and weld across the x-axis. Now it's symmetrical. I'm gonna tap X on my keyboard to turn symmetry on. And now if I tap over here for those two points and I go in here and I choose move, rotate or rotate, it'll work across symmetry here. And again, all I gotta do is walk across here and continue to kind of manipulate my curve. And again, if it grabs a piece of your curve, just go through here and mask. You can control tap to blur that mask. And again, you can continue 
very quickly manipulating your meshes, not just with moving or rotating, but also twisting and scaling and inflating. And you may remember from, again, this is, you're in the 2023 playlist, but down here there's a proxy pose functionality in ZBrush. You can do the exact same thing. Let's open up another project really quick. So here we have a very high poly Rancor creature. I'm gonna go down here to geometry, hit this proxy pose button. That's going to give me a temporary low res mesh that I can manipulate and I can use anchors for this. So again, B, A, N to grab our anchor brush. I'm gonna have rotate selected. I'm gonna click one anchor point, click another anchor point. So again, if I wanna like turn these wrists in, I'm gonna click one here, click one here. I'm gonna hold down control to position these inside my mesh, and then I can go through here and move, scale, and rotate. Of course, I need to keep the feet from moving, so I'm gonna hit W temporarily, hold down Control, and mask along the arm, so I'm just messing with the hand here, and now we can hit uh, Q to go back into draw mode, and now we can go through here and we can you know, bend these wrists out. And then I continue working down the hand, so I'm gonna say, you know, let's bend this thumb in, I'm gonna hold down Control, Mask out my hand, I'm gonna put two anchor points here and we're gonna rotate this in. I'm just gonna to continue to kind of walk down my anchor points. And again, at any point I can go through here and I can twist, I can move, I can scale, I can inflate whatever I wanna do with those anchor points and have it manipulate my mesh. Once I'm done, I can hop out of proxy pose just by hitting that button. Then you'll see my high res dynamesh follow it along with that low res mesh. Now, the only thing I haven't talked about is how to get rid of these points. Uh, of course, when you click on it, uh, click on your object here, you're gonna see it's, it'll just create a new point as you go. If you wanna delete a point, you can hold down Alt and you can tap. So again, tap to create your points, uh, hover over and select and hold down Control to go through and move these points, and then Alt, tap them to delete the points.